Okay, everybody, so if you're like me, you don't like to read, but you still like to have information. And if you thought about becoming a real estate agent or thought about what it would take to become a real estate agent in South Africa, Private Property has published an article that I found, which I'm going to read with you quickly so you don't have to in the future. So let's start. How to become a real estate agent in South Africa. This was published on the 26th of February, 2021. Want to pursue a career in real estate? Follow this step-by-step guide for all the information you need about becoming an agent in South Africa and earning commission. You might have heard about qualified real estate agent or perhaps even considered a career in the property industry. Chances are that you started and then discarded your search due to all the jargon used in the various resources you needed to work through in order to get the full picture. We take an in-depth look at the process and what a real estate specialist has to do in order to earn their commission. Getting qualified as an estate agent today is not as easy as it was in the past. It is imperative for an aspiring estate agent to be provided with the correct training opportunity so that they are well equipped to earn a decent income working in an industry that is extremely competitive, says Lara Macardo, sales trainer at Inhal and Falkers, Southern Africa. I don't know if that's how you really spell that, but I just did. This guide covers the following. Definitions of terms used who needs to have a real estate qualification, the costs involved, the basic requirements, get going, the five-step process. Need to know before you get started. Definitions. Education regulations means the standard of training of a state agent's regulations. EAAP or EAAP means the Estate Agency Affairs Board. NQF Level 4 means the further education and training certificate required by non-principal estate agents. NQF Level 5 means the national certificate required by principal estate agents. PDE means the professional designation examination conducted by the EAAP. PDE 4 means the professional designation examination for non-principal estate agents. PDE5 means the professional designation examination for principal estate agents. FFC means fidelity fund certificate issued by the EAAP validating legal trade in property. So who needs to have real estate qualifications? A real estate qualification is required by anyone who buys or sells property as a profession, negotiates to buy or sell property, canvasses or undertakes or offer to canvas for a lease or a leaser for a rental of property, pl- publicly exhibits for a sale or to let of property, collects or receives any money payable on account of a lessee of immovable property or business undertaking or renders any other service which the Minister of Human Settlements may specify by means of a notice in the Government Gazette. What costs are involved? As with any professional qualifications, there are fees applicable. The costs are not payable at once, but rather at the various stages of the process. The total fees for the two-year period is approximately 25,000 rand. What are the basic requirements? The intern estate agent needs to complete the 12-month internship of being mentored by a professional and experienced estate agent. This requirement will ensure that the intern is provided with a personal record of all practical tasks completed and experience gained at the workplace. The intern is expected to complete and maintain a logbook in which accomplished activities are recorded and signed off by the principal or mentor or coach or supervisor assigned to assist and provide the intern estate agent with logistical support during the internship period. 
there will be no exemptions granted for completing the internship or the logbook. The intern estate agent must complete their FETC or the Further Education and Training Certificate in real estate at level NQF4 through with an accredited provider and receive a Certificate of Competence from Services, CEDA, the Service Sector Education and Training Authority. This qualification has 150 credits, which equates to 1,500 notional hours, also known as study hours needed to complete the course. It is possible to combine the FETC NQF4 qualification and the internship so that the intern estate agent can work on these two aspects of the qualification at the same time, as long as they have completed at least eight months of their internship. If the intern holds any degrees or diplomas in certain areas, it is possible to apply for and be exempt from completing the FETC. Lastly, an intern must also write and pass the Professional Designate Exam or PDE after they have been found competent by services CETA in their NQF Level 4 portfolio of evidence. The PDE form must be passed within two years from the date of the first issue of the Intern Estate Agent of an Intern Fidelity Fund Certificate. It grants the Intern Estate Agent a status upgrade to a full status, non-principal estate agent. No exemptions will be granted from writing the PDE exam. If an agent wants to further extend their education in order to become a principal and run their own business, they must be found competent in NQF Level 5 and PDE Level 5. It will take between two to three years of an intern estate agent to complete the whole process and three to four years for a principal. An intern agent may sell property in the meantime, but no legal documentation, mandates, or contracts may be signed off without the presence of the principal or full status agent. Professional registered designations are as follows. PPRE, Professional Practitioner in Real Estate, PTE4, and MPRE, Master Practitioner in Real Estate, PDE5. This is just a small diagram to show you how to finally get started and uh, get to the end. So the first step they say here is start. It's not really clear, so I can't really zoom in that far to show you what it says. But uh, it says, I think, choose a career in real estate and apply to a, for a position or a registered something agency as an intern. What last? Hmm. And I, pay, I really can't read this because it's not clear at all. They should have made it a little bit more clear. But uh, yeah, according to this little drawing here, diagram, whatever you want to call it, the first step is to start, the second step is to register, third step is to learn, fourth step is to prepare and uh, prepare for finals, fifth step is get licensed, the sixth step is celebrate, well that's going to be a long time after. And the seventh step is to grow after you've finished celebrating. So, let's read on. On the five-step process. The five-step process. Step one, apply for a position at a registered estate agency as an intern. All persons seeking to enter the real estate agency profession are required to serve as intern estate agents acting under the supervision of a principal estate agent or of a full status estate agent who has continuously held a valid Fidelity Fund certificate issued by the EAAB for a period not less than three years, thereby creating a mentor-protege relationship 
regardless of any academic, professional, or other qualifications which they may hold. Once the potential interim estate agent has decided on an employer of choice, they will still need to apply for the position and go through the interview process. We at Enhel and Falkers, I, I really don't know how to read this name, I think it's Afrikaans, but let's go. We at Enhel and Fal Falkers, is that how they say it? Well, we at Enhel and Falkers, <laughs> I, uh, I chuckle every time I read this, okay. We at Enhol and Falkers have set a procedure of interviews which are completed before we select our agents, as we only take on individuals who will live up to the company values. The first interview after receiving a CV will be a telephonic one. If you meet the basic criteria, you will be invited for an official interview. Should a candidate pass the second phase, they are given an online test to complete which aids us in ensuring that the candidate will be successful, says Craig Hutchinson, CEO, CEO of Enhel and Falkler, Southern Africa. This is quite an important step, as the choice of employer could determine the success or failure of the potential intern estate agent. And here's another eight simple steps. So they write here eight simple steps. Let's zoom out. And it says eight simple steps to register an intern, estate agent, or attorney employee. Or attorney employee. Oh, maybe this one is a little bit clearer so we can actually read. Step one is register on the My EWAP Agents Portal. This is the address which you're going to enter. Step two, your seven digit reference number, username and password will be sent to your email address. Step three, log in on the My EWAP Agents Portal with your access details and complete the registration form. Number four, um, Upload the certified copy of your ID and letter of employment. Number five, pay the indicated application fee using the seven digit reference number by credit card or EFT. Number six is your application and documentation will be processed. Number seven, on successful allocation of payment, the FFC or registration certificate will be issued and email notification sent to you. Step number eight, log in to my EWAP agents portal with your login details and view, download, print your FFC or registration certificate. So that's how you register to be a uh, intern estate agent or an attorney employee. Okay, so let's read on. Step two of this is still part of the uh, five step process, okay? Now we're on step two. Register with the Estate Agency Affairs Board or EWAB. Once the intern estate agent has successfully been employed, they need to register as an intern agent with the Estate Agency Affairs Board or EWAB to receive their intern fidelity fund certificate. So, once, you're, once you successfully have been employed, you then need to register as an intern agent with the EAAP to receive your certificate that allows you to be uh, an intern. Okay, in order to register, a candidate needs to lodge a completed application comprising of the application form, Certified copy of a valid ID book, certified copy of a valid passport if not a South African, a valid work permit if not a South African, required payment or proof of payment for registration, letter of employment on an official letterhead signed by the principal of the firm, and step three. Now we're going to step three. Complete your 12-month internship. 
all new entrants to the estate agency profession are obliged to serve as intern estate agents for a continuous period of 12 months from the date of the first issue of their FFC. The aim of the compulsory internship period is to equip the intern estate agent with the relevant practical and theoretical workplace knowledge required to operate successfully in the sector. Each intern has to undergo training and practical knowledge of all of the following. Industry, law, finance, marketing, management, administration, and paralegal. The intern estate agent is expected to complete and maintain a logbook in which accomplished activities are recorded and signed off by the principal, mentor, the coach, supervisor, assigned to assist and provide the intern with logistical support during the internship period. Tasks recorded in the logbook include listings completed, inspections done, show houses arranged with registers, mandates negotiated, sales or lease contracts concluded, property values established, agendas for and meetings training attended, proof of time management and time log sheets. Now we're going to step four. So on step four, complete NQF4 through an accredited provider or have 150 points or 1,500 hours. It is expected that after having served for an intern estate agent for a continuous period of 12 months and having been certified against the FETC real estate, the newcomer of the sector will have attained a similar degree of knowledge, skills and expertise as a practitioner who has already been active in the estate agency profession for quite some time. What topics are covered in the NQF4? Estate Agency Affairs Act and Code of Conduct, Real Estate Product and Services, Legal Environment Acts, Legal Environment Contracts, Financial Process, FICA, Tax, Accounting, Marketing and Selling, Leasing, Immovable Property, Estate Agency Management, Agency Administration and Systems, paralegal environment. The criteria for NQF4 qualification. The entrant must complete their internship training or NQF4 qualification with an accredited provider and receive a certificate of competence from service CETA, the Services Sector Education and Training Authority. Services CETA or CETA governs, controls, and monitors education standards. The real estate industry falls under CETA trade and industry. It is legislated that in order to be a full-status real estate agent, the candidate must be found competent in the outcomes-based NQF Level 4 real estate. This qualification has 150 credits, which equates to 1,500 notional hours study hours needed to complete the course. CETA requires 30% of the time spent studying to be in the classroom and the rest open book on their own. It is designed so that the intern estate agent can easily complete the qualification at their own pace within the allocated time. The ideal scenario is to complete the academic qualification simultaneously with the practical logbook in the workplace. The time frame for completion is one year for the logbook and two years for an academic qualification. The intern estate agent must maintain a portfolio of evidence or POE reflecting the various estate agency functions and activities that have been undertaken and performed during the course of the internship period. The POE an intern logbook is submitted to the EAAP for assessment and granting of NQF4 status. Intern estate agents holding relevant certain subjects and experience tertiary qualification can, upon application to the EAAP, 
and having paid the required assessment fee, be granted an equivalency exemption against the NQF level 4 and or 5 real estate qualifications. If the intern estate agent has exemptions for NQF4, they must submit their logbook for assessment together with the required documentation for exemption. The Portfolio of Evidence or POE The Portfolio of Evidence will be a separate file, carefully created and maintained by the intern estate agent and should align with the prescribed logbook activities. All naturally occurring workplace evidence generated over the 12-month internship period and reflecting the workplace learning experience of the intern estate agent should be inserted. The intern estate agent will be required to download and print the portfolio guides, questions as they form the portfolio of evidence or POE. Exemptions. Please refer to the exemption matrix for details on how who could qualify for exemption? Should the intern estate agent apply for exemption, their application will also be included in their POE. The following documentation should be added. A letter from the applicant indicating the NQF real estate qualification or qualifications against which the applicant seeks an equivalency exemption as well as whether or not the applicant currently holds a valid Fidelity Fund Certificate issued by the EAAB and, if so, the status of that Fidelity Fund Certificate, whether an intern, non-principal or principal Fidelity Fund Certificate, a copy of the candidate's identity document, the candidate's full curriculum vitae, originals or certified copies, original or originals, certified copy or copies of qualifications either awarded to the candidate or in respect of which the candidate relies for the assessment of the equivalency exemption application. Original or originals or certified copy or copies of the statement or statements of courses passed towards the attainment of the relevant qualification or qualifications original or originals or certified copies or certified copies well i said copies twice certified copy or certified copies of any other professional qualifications and or designations that may have been awarded to the candidate and such further information as the applicant wishes to disclose to the eaab for the purpose of properly assessing the applicant's equivalency qualifications some approved instructions here i'm going to need you to just pause and look through if you need this information because uh, these are just the uh, different institutions that you can go to to get your qualifications okay so let's go straight to step five after that step five write and pass your pde four Professional Designated Exam The Professional Designation Examination or PDE is an integrated test of knowledge and case study for estate agents. After the internship or after the 8 month, the intern estate agent may apply to take their PDE for exam with the EAAB. After successful submission of the logbook and POE, the intern will be allowed to enroll and undertake the professional designation examination for non-principal estate agents or PDE4. The education regulations provide that no person may be registered as a full status estate agent unless that person has successfully completed the PDE4 conducted by the EAAB. The criteria for PDE qualification. Only estate agents that have already qualified or been exempt from the NQF4 non-principals and NQF5 who are principals should apply to write the PDE. Interns need to have 65% or higher in order to pass and be certified. 
Upon passing PDE4, the intern status will be automatically upgraded to a full status as well as the designation Professional Practitioner in Real Estate or PPRE. Once the intern estate agent is upgraded to a full status property sales advisor, they can operate independently within the company they are employed by. Earning CPD points. Continuing profession development or CPD is the future in real estate as it is in most other professional industries. This happens via road shows and seminars presented by the EAAB across South Africa on relevant topics including new legislation, changes, updates and amendments. It helps all agents and principals to stay abreast of ever-changing industry regulations relating to recall relating to real estate as well as new laws and acts. In order to maintain status and professional designation, every registered agent or principal is required to accumulate and maintain 60 CPD points in a rolling three-year cycle equivalent to 60 hours of training. The process of becoming a professional practitioner in real estate may seem to be a long, tedious and intimidating one. Engel and Falkers understands that it is crucial for an intern estate agent to be provided with all the necessary tools, guidance and ongoing training to assist them every step of the way. So that's pretty much it. And um, if you like, here they want you to subscribe, but uh, yeah, you can subscribe to my channel and uh, let me know what else you want me to read through if you are interested in uh, reading or getting information, but you're not interested in the actual reading. So till next time, thanks for reading through all of it. I know it was tedious, even though you didn't read. Because, uh, yeah, it's the first time I read this, so I made a lot of mistakes. But, yeah, thanks for seeing it through. Till next time, peace.